Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Come with me and let's take photos of the Hollywood sign from behind. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Romilly. I'm a French photographer from the amazing, the romantic city of Paris, France. Right now, I'm in Hollywood and I'm going to hike all the way down to the all the way up to the Hollywood sign with a good friend of mine named Tim Shield. He's an amazing photographer from Canada. We're gonna to try to get an amazing view of Hollywood using the Hollywood sign as a foreground element. I'm not sure it's gonna work because they change a lot of things. We're trying to find our way up there, but let's see, come and follow us and let's take some great photos together, guys. Come on. I'm going to try different techniques to shoot the Hollywood sign. It's kind of tricky because there's a fence. So you can see here my good friend Tim Shield, what he did something very clever. He put his camera up and so that he's going to be able to do panos. I might do a similar setup with some tapes to have this, you know, uh, down view. But the main thing is I'm going to try to have one special framing and not move and do as the sun comes down, as it gets darker, different exposure, because I want to get the Hollywood sign, they are not LED. So when it gets dark, it gets really dark. So what I want to do is I want to take some original photos where, you know, we can see how they are and then maybe blend them with the night. That's how I think Peter Ling did his famous photo of the Hollywood sign. I want to try to do something similar. We'll see. But first I have to find a way to uh, uh, stick my camera like Tim did. Let's give it a shot. All right, so that's the setup. I got the camera that is taped on the fence, looking over As you can see, this little adventure turned out to be pretty all right. I'm very happy. I never got such a good shot of the Hollywood sign. Uh, very sharp, uh, very, very sharp. You can almost see somebody, you know, at the window waving or something. So uh, actually, it was a great idea to, you know, put the camera and stripe it with, a, uh, with some tape on the fence because I had a very stable point uh, and I never shot it from so high. So let me show you a little bit what I got. So this is some HDR shot, uh, and I'm actually going to HDR it because I really want to make it pop. So that's the normal exposure, that's the underexposure, that's the overexposure. But then I stayed later on, and I did this exposure. Oh, sorry, uh, you know, when, when the seed lights are darker, this one, this one, and this one. And basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edge, I'm going to retouch each one, and then I'm going to do a little trick: is I'm going to retouch it first in Lightroom, and then HDR it. I find it gives better result. Just let me walk you through what else I did. So, you know, it started off with a golden hour. I took a lot of golden hour shots. And, you know, golden hour is nice, but it's never as nice as sunset. Uh, it, very often, you know, it's always a sunset photo that wins. Uh, let me see here. Let me show you. Uh, I did a lot of little panos. I also did a lot of HDR, uh, which I've not used yet, like HDR, uh, where I am on, on the tripod because this way and it takes a lot of time I can make like a super super high definition version of it using all this HDR but that would be maybe for another video because it's a very long process because you have to you know retouch every set of three photos so I'm gonna make it simple for you guys I'm just gonna select what I actually did use at the end so I did a few tries what I did is first I th remember in the video I said I was going to use maybe an exposure from early on because I wanted to get the letters pretty lit and then when it gets a little t later I was afraid that the letters would be too dark but in fact uh, to make things simple I'm only going to use uh, the the this HDR set which is from um, the latest one, when you know the the one which is a bit later at night, because with the HDR it actually turned all right. So first of all, uh, I'm going to take the the normal exposure. And I'm going to do my usual workflow, which is you know open up the shadows. I'm do my I'm going to do my white point. Make sure I don't. Voila! I'm going to do my black point. 
I want to find a cool white balance highlights. Yeah, I might bring down the highlights. So on the, maybe I go to shade, shade, and add a bit of uh, magenta. I don't do too, too much, too much retouching. Maybe a little bit of clarity, a little bit of vibrant, but that's it. Okay, that's uh, that's kind of good enough for me. Let me see, is there any noise on this one? So usually what I do is I do that on the first photo, then I'm gonna select all three and I'm gonna synchronize what I did, okay? So I've got a very basic retouching. And now on the underexposed photo, I always check and make sure that there is not too much noise. Uh, there may, may be a bit of noise. So the underexposed photo, maybe I give it a little bit of like a 20 noise reduction just to be safe, okay? But that's just the starting point. Now I'm going to select all three photos. I'm going to right click. I'm going to export and I'm going to use Aurora HDR 2018. I'm going to use the option of use TIFF with Lightroom Adjuster. What that does is that it takes into account what uh, I've done into Lightroom. And instead of using the raw file, it's going to use TIFF files. And it usually makes the photo to pop even more. So it's going to load into Aurora. Aurora is for me the best HDR software. If you don't have it, you should check it out. I've got a great offer. The link is below this video. And I could do it without HG, you know, without Aurora. And I'll show it to you without Aurora, but I think it's, it's better this way. So I'm just going to click on alignment and create HDR. And that's going to load into Aurora. All right, here we are in Aurora HDR. And if you go uh, here in categories, you have the Surge Remedy preset. It's built in the software. Uh, so I'm going to click on the Surge Remedy preset. I'm going to take my basic preset as a starting point. And uh, so it's going to process the image with this. And you can just go through and you know adjust however you want the settings. On this one, I, I think I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to boost the black a little bit here. And uh, Okay, just a little bit from the HDR. And then I want to do some denoise. There's a lot of noise that comes from the HDR, so I'm going to do, I mean, a lot. I'm just going to do like a 20 uh, denoise. That's going to help. But anyway, you know, we got all these sensor dust which were invisible to the eyes and which are now visible into uh, the HDR. So, you know, maybe just add a bit of contrast. Okay, so yeah, a little bit of just so I did two things contrast and denoising and the rest I'm going to do in Photoshop. Uh, let's see if we can see the before. That's the before. That's the after. You know, it just makes everything pop a bit. Okay, I'm going to apply and that's going to do that. And we're going to go back to Lightroom and check out the final result. All right, so we're back here uh, and we are ready to take this into Photoshop. But maybe uh, before I do that, uh, I'm just going to do a you know, some more, oh no, actually, you know what, Let, let's go edit, edit into Photoshop, and one thing you can do, because it's already a TIFF file, you can click on edit original, because if you click on edit a copy, it's going to make another copy of it, which is going to be painful. All right, so we're here in Photoshop, and on this one, first, I'm going to reframe it, so I've got the cropping tool here, uh, I'm going to use a straighten tool, just make sure my horizon is kind of straight, okay, that's kind of cool. Maybe, maybe, yeah, that's that's good, that's good. Okay, and um, and then I just want to crop even more, actually. I really want to make it like a pano, like this. Okay, that's cool, straight horizon. And now I'm going to duplicate the layer. It needs a bit of cleanup because the HDR, you know, made a whole bunch of uh, little uh, things which are not really cool. So I'm going to go to the uh, this tool the spotting brush tool, I'm just gonna take out my little sensor dust. I'd rather do that, I could do it in, in, in Lightroom, but I think it's much faster in Photoshop. And, um, okay, voila. Voila, 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 it's gonna be nice, it's going to be nice. Okay, and then, you see, uh, the problem is that there is like still some like grain and things, so sometimes what I do is I just go like really strong, I, I go to blur, I go to Gaussian Blur. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to make first, I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And there's many ways. Sometimes I blend it back with the original RAW file if I want a more, you know, uh, a more uh, natural result. I just want to blur the sky a little bit just to make sure that it's kind of nice. Voila. So I blur the entire photo. Then I create a mask. Oops. I 
I press Command I to invert the mask. B for brush, B for brush. So black uh, conceals white revealed, so it's black, so nothing can be seen. On, and then I take the white, and I'm gonna put this at 50%. So a white brush on a black mask makes whatever was under visible. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Voila, voila, voila. It makes like a cool, uh, this, yeah, it makes us a more like a diffuse sky. I love diffuse skies. But that's not all. Uh, I, I have this sky here that I'm going to take and I'm just gonna put it over. I'm actually gonna use this sky. This guy is one of my favorite. And I'm just gonna put it into multiply mode because, you know, I was missing some clouds here and I want some clouds to be back. So I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna lower the opacity so that it's less obvious, but still there. And then I'm gonna make a mask and I'm gonna blend it. You see there's a bit of a line here. There's a bit of a line. So uh, yeah, make sure your opacity of your brush is 50%. So this is white, so we want the reverse. We want black, so you can press X to go black as a foreground. And then I'm just gonna blend that in really quick just to add a bit of clouds and voila. Okay, it's good. There's one thing that really bothers me is that that bush is really awful. I want to take that bush out. So I'm going to go on this layer. I'm going to take the stem tool, S for stem tool, which is here. And then I'm just going to click here. And the cool thing is that it's so random that it's kind of easy to just take that bush out. I just don't like that bush. And uh, voila, it's so random that nobody's going to notice that. And you see before, after, voila. And I'm going to go and close this save it and finish it off in Lightroom. Let's finish it off in Lightroom. Okay, so we are here in Lightroom. And now, uh, usually what I like to do is I like to just open a little bit of shadows a bit more, the highlights, do the black, just add a bit of contrast by just moving these four sliders a bit. And then maybe, maybe I wanna close the photo, you know, and just maybe, maybe, just make this a little bit darker so we have more attention on the Hollywood Hollywood sign. Now the Hollywood sign is a little pink to me. Uh, so I think I'm gonna take a brush and I'm gonna boost the exposure and I'm gonna lower the saturation. And I'm just gonna paint over the brush, over the Hollywood. It's gonna make it a bit brighter and it's gonna take a bit that pink that's there. Okay, and then uh, I'm gonna cl click a new brush and I like to uh, boost the exposure on this one and boost the maybe just add a bit of you know highlights on the city maybe add a bit of clarity at the same time you know but at one point you got to stop you got to stop you got to stop I think on the original photo okay one thing you can do is because I, I, I did this before so I'm going to give it three star and I'm going to select three star okay here and um, I'm going to use this new mode that I love which is the um, which is the reference photo. I'm gonna drag and drop the reference photo, which is the one I showed you at first. And then that's the one I'm doing now, uh, right? That's what I'm doing now, uh, or not. Yeah, that's the one I'm doing now. So just to compare, so that's the original. You see, every time I do retouching, so th this one, what I did is I actually cropped it even more. Uh, selecting the crop tool will, will exceed the, the, the reference. Okay, then I, let me see before I do anything else. Uh, on this one, yeah, that was the original one that I did, and it was an, uh, an earlier exposure, but I like to have, look look on this one, how much more CT lights that I get, you know. So I actually like this one, I just need to crop it the same way. So I'm just gonna crop it, and okay, continue, it's gonna exit. I really wanna make it very panoramic, and voila, voila, mesdames and messieurs. So it's a bit of a crazy workflow, you know, you have to uh, repeat. I repeat, you have to first correct your photo in Lightroom, then HDR them in Aurora, then take them into Photoshop to change the sky. You know, but at the end of the day, this is probably one of the most stunning photo I ever took of LA. If you don't have Aurora HDR, we got a great offer for you below this video, and I will see you in another video, mesdames and messieurs. I hope you enjoyed this. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please give it a little like. That'd be nice. Also, Please take a second to subscribe to this YouTube channel. All you have to do is click on the subscribe button and click on the little bell and you will get a notification every time a free video comes out. I try to do one or two a week, uh, always with really cool free stuff. So subscribe, take a second, I'll wait for it. All right, so you're subscribed. 
so amazing. I will see you in another video. Thank you very much.